in the grave. We father every morn, leaves of the fallen, tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles. Acts 20. Acts 20. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them and departed for to go into Macedonia. And when he had gone over those parts and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece and there abode three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him as he was about to sail into Syria, he purposed to return through Macedonia. And there accompanied him into Asia Sopater of Berea, 
and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and Secundus, and Gaius of Derby and Timotheus, and of Asia, Tychicus and Trophimus. These going before tarried for us at Troas, and we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and came unto them to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him, and embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again, and had broken bread and eaten, and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive, and were not a little comforted. And we went before to ship, and sailed unto Assos, there intending to take in Paul, for so had he appointed, minding himself to go afoot. And when he met with us at Assos, we took him in and came to Mytilene, and we sailed thence and came the next day over against Caius. And the next day we arrived at Samos and tarried at Trogillium, and the next day we came to Miletus. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus, because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him unto the ship. Acts 21 And it came to pass that after we were gotten from them and had launched, we came with a straight course unto Coas, and the day following unto Rhodes, and from thence unto Patera. And finding a ship sailing over unto Phoenicia, we went aboard and set forth. Now when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand and sailed into Syria and landed at Tyre, for there the ship was to unlade her burden. And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days, who said to Paul through the Spirit that he should not go up to Jerusalem. 
And when we had accomplished those days, we departed and went our way. And they all brought us on our way with wives and children till we were out of the city. And we kneeled down on the shore and prayed. And when we had taken our leave one of another, we took ship and they returned home again. And when we had finished our course from Tyre, we came to Ptolemais and saluted the brethren and abode with them one day. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased, saying, The will of the Lord be done. And after those days we took up our carriages and went up to Jerusalem. There went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea, and brought with them one Nason of Cyprus, an old disciple, with whom we should lodge. And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. What is it, therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this that we say to thee, We have four men which have a vow on them. Them take and purify thyself with them, and be at charges with them, that they may shave their heads, and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, and from blood, and from strangled, and from fornication. Then Paul took the men, and the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification, until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place, and further brought Greeks also into the temple and hath polluted this holy place. For they had seen before with him in the city Trophimus and Ephesian, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple, and forthwith the doors were shut. And as they went about to kill him, tidings came unto the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was in an uproar, who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down unto them. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they left beating of Paul. Then the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains and demanded who he was and what he had done. And some cried one thing, some another among the multitude. And when he could not know the certainty for the tumult, he commanded him to be carried into the castle. And when he came upon the stairs, so it was that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. For the multitude of the people followed after, crying, Away with him! And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Art not thou that Egyptian which before these days madest an uproar and ledest out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers? But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. 
And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
when the tempest rages. Praise the Lord. If you are there and you know that Jesus is there right now, I said praise the Lord. Divine solution for everyone. Miracle for everyone. Salvation for everyone. And the divine touch in your life for everyone, for you even tonight, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight and we bless your name. We thank you, Lord, because you love everyone. And your mercy and your power and your love and your compassion and your miracle touch is for everyone. And therefore, Lord, I pray tonight, no one will escape your power and their solution in Jesus' name. Confirm your words in every life. Amen. Thank you because we know you have done, done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Once again, I welcome everyone. All those of us who are here, Papa Ground, I pray that your coming will not be in vain. In Jesus' name. In all our churches, and all the churches that are connected, all the countries, and all the continents, I pray that the divine touch will take effect in every one of your lives in Jesus' name. Tonight, we're coming for the divine touch. By the way, how does that divine touch come upon you? How does that divine solution come in your life? How do you connect? What actually connects us with the touch of heaven, the touch of God, the touch of Christ? What connects us to the Savior? What connects us to the Lord? What connects us to miracles even now today? In one word, gospel. Somebody help me shout the word gospel. I'm reading to you from Acts chapter 14. And we're looking at verse 7. It says in Acts chapter 14, verse 7, and there they preached the gospel. That's the word right there. There they preached the gospel. And then I come to verse 8. It says in verse 8, and there was a certain man at Lystra. And there is a certain person there. Papa ground. And there's a certain person there where you are. Tonight is your night. Amen. You are the one and the power of God will touch you tonight in Jesus' name. There's a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his speech, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had word. And then we're told in verse 9, it says in verse 9, the same heard Paul speak. Like you are hearing tonight, what you are hearing will translate into salvation in your life. Will translate into miracle in your life. And will translate to divine solution in your life in Jesus' name. The same, that certain man, that impotent man, that helpless man, that seemingly hopeless man, that same man had Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Had faith to be healed. You know, tonight, that 
is what happens in every life because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god you hear the gospel the gospel of salvation the gospel of power the gospel of healing the gospel of deliverance the gospel of total solution divine solution in your life and when you hear and you respond to what you are hearing a miracle must take place in your life say miracle will take place in my life the same heard paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed but then says he said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and he lived and walked miracle and he lived and walked divine solution and he lived he jumped up and he walked power came from heaven as he's coming to you tonight so he's coming to me tonight today we're talking as i look at that passage I'm talking to you on the gospel of divine solution. The gospel of divine solution. That's what gospel means. The good news of divine solution. Good news is coming your way. And that good news will work wonders in your life tonight in Jesus' name. I've read the story to you. As you look at the story what do you find? Number one, you find the impotence of the man. That's our situation. What's our situation? We're helpless. What's our situation? We're looking for solution. What's our situation? We're having problems and we have not found solution to the problem. The, uh, the, the impotence of the man, our situation. Number two, the importance of the message. The gospel message, the powerful message, the heavenly message, the message concerning Christ who died for us, who rose again, and who will save everyone who believes. The importance of that message, that is our solution. Point number two then, the importance of the message, our solution. Number three, the impartation impartation something is coming upon you tonight impartation somebody shout impartation power in your life glory in your life solution in your life and then whatever it is that has tied you down tonight is the night that there will be an impartation in your life in jesus name number three now the impartation of the miracle, our salvation. Number one, our situation. Number two, the solution. Number three, the salvation. Let's come to number one now. Number one, the impotence of the man, our situation. What we are saying is the condition of that man, the helplessness of that man, and the hopelessness of that man and the poverty of that man and the inability in that man that's like you that's like me that's like every man the impotence of the man our situation let me read it to you again in acts chapter 14 reading from verse 8 and there such a certain man at lystra impotent in his feet being a cripple from his mother's womb, look at this, who never had walked. Who never had walked. How do you say that's a situation? Number one, he could not walk by himself. Without age, without help, without power, without the sustaining power of the miracle working power of the name of Jesus by himself he couldn't do anything that's the situation of every man on earth we're born into this world that's why david said in my in sin did my mother conceive me in iniquity was i born 
because every man since the fall of adam and eve every man became hopeless and became helpless and without him we can do nothing that's why job said that anyone that is born of a woman is unclean because Without the help coming from above, we cannot have any power, any strength to stand, stand straight and stand tall and do what we need to do. Number one, that's a situation the man could not walk by himself. And you cannot walk the right way and the proper way. And you cannot go up and do what you ought to do by yourself without him you can do nothing but thank god tonight christ is there by your side christ is there anywhere you are in your home in the local church in an hotel anywhere you are tonight this is coming to you and what you could not do by yourself the lord will do for you tonight in jesus name look at that verse again who never had work? Who never had work? Not even with any support. Give him some support, material support, spiritual support, religious support, and psychological support. All the same, even with a support. This man could not work. He never had work. We have gone through many things in life and we thought, if I have this support, the support of education, maybe I can rise up and I can walk and I can get anywhere I want. Maybe I can even get to heaven, walk straight into heaven without uh, even with the support of psychology, of philosophy, of education, of civilization, of traditional religion, whatever, by himself, he couldn't make it. Even with human support, he cannot make it. And you, as you come today, you have come to the right place because what religion cannot do, what education cannot do, what psychology cannot do, what civilization cannot do, Christ will do for you today. Are you there? I said tonight, it's your night. This man number three, he was unable to walk like others. He just saw them walking, but like others, he had the desire, he wanted to be, he could not be. You know about us, we have learned about Enoch, we have learned about Noah, we have learned about Abraham, and they walked, and they walked, and they walked with God. And we say, like them, I'm going to walk. And then we try, turn over a new leaf, make resolution, and tell ourselves, I'm going to be good, I'll be better, I'll walk in the way of the Lord, in the way of righteousness like others. The man could not walk like others were walking, and you cannot make it yourself to you. You cannot walk like others, like Daniel, like Samuel, and you cannot walk like all those uh, great men and women of old. They did it by grace, and if you're going to walk like others, those have introduced to you now, it's going to take the grace of God. But praise the Lord, that grace is here tonight. For you, it's here tonight. For me, it's here tonight. And I pray that that grace that helped Enoch, helped Noah, helped Abraham, helped Samuel, helped Paul, and all the others, that same grace and that same power will come upon your life tonight. It will help you. I said it will help you. The man, number one, could not walk by himself. Number two, he could not walk even with support, human support. Number three, he was unable to walk even like others. Now, as he was born, he must have seen his father get up and go and come and then walk. And as he saw his father, like father, like son, I want to be like my father. I'll walk like my father. Number four, the man had never walked. He wanted to, 
he desired to he felt if my father is walking i'm going to walk he could not walk like his father we have a father in heaven and he wants us to walk with him and walk like him is a father is a maker is a creator and is the god of heaven and how we just think if i can just do what the father is doing but you know we cannot because we were born impotent heavenly power is not in anyone it's not in any creature to walk like god by the way walking like god is what we call godliness god godliness living like god talking like god strong like god moving anywhere like god overcoming any challenge like god no we cannot in our strength and the man had never walked. He couldn't walk like God. Number five, he couldn't walk right. You know, the Bible says that the legs of the lame are unequal. If he tried to walk, he'll be wobbling. And that's what has happened to us. We sometimes will think, I'm doing right, and I'm walking like this, I'm walking like this. And when you see your picture taken from heaven, you say, I didn't know it was that bad. You see, all lives, no matter how beautiful, no matter how good, and no matter how appreciated here on earth, when heaven, when the picture is taken from the sky, when your picture is taken from heaven, you are wobbling, you cannot walk right. That's why we came here tonight, that what we couldn't find solution to, in our own human strength, solution has now come. By faith, you will walk right. In his power, you will walk right. As you connect with the Lord Jesus Christ, you will walk right in Jesus' name. What the Lord is telling us is that as you look at the man, he was born that way. He was impotent in his feet. And he was a cripple from his mother's womb. And then it says, who never had walked. And have you ever walked sometimes, you know, as you see somebody and you say, are you a Christian? He says, yes, I am a Christian. What do you say? You are a Christian. I was born in a Christian home. I hear you. You are born in the garage that does not make you a car. You are born where the sheep and the animals are being raised. That does not necessarily make you a sheep. But if you are going to have this power and this ability to walk righteously, you will be born the second time. Born from above. And born by the power and the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God it's just today. I said it's just today because that power of heaven as you connect with Jesus and you say, I accept, I believe Jesus is my Savior. You'll be born afresh, born again, born anew, and then you'll be able to walk righteously. Number seven, he was unable to walk in the way. Yes, he knew the way. He could see the way. He said, that's the way. If I'm going to succeed, that's the way to success. If I'm going to be happy, that's the way to happiness. If I'm going to be upright, that's the way to uprightness. And if I'm going to have prosperity, that is the way. And then in his heart, in his mind, he wanted to get up and walk in the way. No, he could not. Who never had walked. How many of us know the right way? We know the Ten Commandments. I want to walk in that way. We know the sermon on the mount. What a message Jesus preached. And he said, this is how to live. And this is how to live. And I want to get up and do that. But, you know, we were born with this powerlessness in a moral life in our spiritual life, in our inner life, who never had walked, 
we cannot walk in the way in the way that leads to heaven in the way that leads to glory except the divine solution and the divine savior and the divine power will come upon our lives and then by the grace of god from today you will walk straight you will walk right you will walk righteously and you will walk in that narrow path that leads to heaven in jesus name if i'm talking about you where are you can you say amen uh, look at Romans, Romans chapter uh, 7, and I'm reading here from verse 15. All these things have been describing everything connected together here in Romans chapter 7, verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. Even myself, my knowledge condemns me. And even myself, all that I know, the things I ought to do, I cannot do them who never at work. For what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. That describes the man. That describes every man. That describes you. But tonight, that story will change. Your story will change tonight. Say, my story will change tonight. Christ will come into your life and Christ will change your story. Number one, the impotence of the man, our situation. Number two now, point number two, the importance of the message, our solution. The importance of the message, our solution. The message is the word. The word is the gospel. Understand? Every good thing you see on earth came by the word. In the beginning, God said, let there be, and there was. There will be light tonight in your life, light tonight in your family, light tonight on your way, and it comes by hearing the message, let there be, there will be in your life tonight in Jesus' name. The importance of the message, our solution. If we're going to have solution, and you are going to have solution, I said you are going to have solution, it comes by the message. Look at Acts chapter 14, verse 7. And there they preached the gospel. And there they preached the gospel. Paul, Silas, what do you have to preach the gospel? What should you just go there and say, lay man, rise up? What do we have to preach the gospel? Why don't we just say, here is divine solution. And then without any worship and without the word and without the message, we just say blind eyes open. And we say, lame man, rise up and walk. Some people say, I don't have time to hear anything. All I came here for is divine solution. Just pronounce it. I will get it. You have to count one before you count two. And you have to count two before you count three. The word first. The message first. And then the miracle will follow. Can I tell you something? As you are there... Paying attention to the word, the wonders will follow after you. As you are there paying attention to the message, miracle will come in your life in Jesus' name. It's the message that tells us about Christ, about God, about what he will do. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. How do you know that without the word? How do you know that without the message? It's the word that makes us to know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. How do you know that without the message? He says, I am God, I change not. Therefore, the children, the sons and daughters of Jacob are not consumed. How do you know that? Is the message, the importance of the message that is our solution. Look at Romans chapter 1, 
and I'm reading from verse 16, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You know, it caused the gospel, the gospel we're talking about, and they preach the gospel. is the gospel of Christ. That is, it tells us about his virgin birth, it tells us about his spotless life. It tells us about his substitutionary death for you. It tells us about his burial. And it tells us about the glorious resurrection. The gospel we're hearing is the gospel of Christ. And then it says, for it is the power of God. The gospel that we're hearing is the power of God. And that power tonight will change your life. Where are you? It will change your situation in Jesus' name. It is the power that breaks heaven open. It is the power, the power of Christ that removes every obstacle and every demarcation between you and the solution. And now as the message is coming from heaven and the miracle is following and the salvation is following every obstruction between you and your salvation, Every obstruction between you and your handicap, everything is cleared away. The message comes straight to you, and then the miracle comes straight to you, and the salvation will come straight to you in Jesus' name. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You see, there are people, they are ashamed of their solution. They are ashamed of the power of God. And when Paul or Silas or Timothy or when the evangelist here tonight, when he says, if you want Christ as your personal savior, so that solution will come to your life, impossibilities will become possible in your life. They look here, they look there, they see somebody there, they say, I don't want that person to know I'm giving my life to the Lord. He's ashamed of the gospel. It's ashamed of the miracle. It's ashamed of the solution. It's ashamed of the provision of heaven for his life. You will not be ashamed. I will not be ashamed. Paul was not ashamed because of the Sanhedrin, religious leaders of the land, and because of his past history, what they knew he had been, and what they knew he had done when he heard the message, when he heard the gospel, when Christ himself spoke to him, he surrendered like you surrender tonight. I say like you surrender tonight, and your life will never be the same again in Jesus' name. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is, look at that, it is, look at that, it is, not that it was. You know, some people will say, I wish I lived at the time of Paul, when the gospel was mighty and powerful. I wish I lived at that time, when solution will always come, for it is in the present day. Tonight, it is the power of God in your life. I said it is the power of God in your life. It said, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Unto salvation. The message the Lord is giving you and giving us, that message will take us away from the path of destruction and from the path of perdition. And it will take you away from the road that leads to hell and now salvation will come to you. Congratulations, salvation will come to you. I rejoice with you tonight. Salvation. I said salvation, redemption, justification, the power of God that turns life around is coming to you tonight in Jesus' name. It is the power of God unto salvation. Look at this, look at this to everyone, to everyone. What does everyone, what does that mean? I said, what does everyone mean? Are you there? Are you part of the everyone? No matter who you are, I'm ignorant, it's for you. 
I'm educated, it's for you. I'm high, it's for you. I am low, it's for you. I've never been to church before, it's for you. I don't know why, how this can happen, it's for you. It is for you tonight, in Jesus' name. To everyone that believes, I believe. I believe. Whatever others say, I believe. Whatever others do, I believe. Whatever others do not do, I believe that gospel message is coming to you. And as we believe tonight, your divine solution has come. And then it says to the Jew first, to the religious, and then also to the Greek. You know, there are some people to the Jew first, and they say, well, I'm a Jew in a spiritual sense. I go to church. I go to Sunday school. I've been baptized as an infant. And then I've been taking Holy Communion. I am confirmed. I've even traveled to the Holy City to the Jew first. Good you are religious. Good you have been reading the Bible. And good you have been observing you know, all those religious festivals to the Jew first. Is coming to you. And then to the Greek, to the barbarian, to the one that knows next to nothing about religion. I've never been there, whatever you are, and whichever side of the world you are coming from, this message of solution, divine solution, and divine power is for everyone. Is it for me? I said, is it for me? Say it for yourself. It is for me. And as you believe that gospel, that message that comes from heaven, and it says it's for everyone, if the gospel of Christ, if the gospel of power, if the gospel of salvation, it is just tonight in Jesus' name. Let's look at point number three now. Number three is uh, the impartation. Once again, somebody say, impartation. That's how you can say impartation. It's coming. I said it's coming. You know, as you come today and you say, yes, Lord, I know this is for me. The impartation of the miracle, our salvation. My salvation. Say that, my salvation. No matter where you are, and no matter your predicament, no matter the impossibilities in your life, that salvation has now come, and it is yours tonight in Jesus' name. The impartation of the miracle, our salvation. I want you to come back to Acts chapter uh, Acts of the Apostles, we're reading from uh, chapter 14, verse 9. The same had Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him. That's attention. That's total attention. That's undivided attention. He was hearing the word. He didn't allow anything to sidetrack him because he knew my moment has come. Your moment has come. And it says, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly, beholding him, Paul looked at him steadfastly. And he looked at Paul steadfastly. And perceiving, Paul perceived that he had faith to be healed. Look at verse 10. Search with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. Before I go on, look at that command. Stand upright on thy feet. Here the Lord comes to us today. We have been impotent. We have been powerless. We have been helpless. And the Lord is saying to us, stand upright. He tells us, number one, physically stand up. I've not been able to do that before. But power is going to be injected into your life. And physically stand up. You will stand up. Limb legs will stand up. Broken bones will be mended. You'll stand up. Physically, stand up. Morally, 
morally stand upright. You have been wobbling and wallowing in sin. You couldn't get up. Your life was dirty. Your life was defiled. And here, now the gospel that will transform your life, the gospel that will turn your life around and physically stand up, morally stand upright. Your life will be upright from tonight. The things you couldn't do by yourself. The power of Christ will come to you tonight. It will be done in Jesus' name. Physically stand up. Morally stand upright. Spiritually stand fast. You see, the word of God tells us as we come to the Lord. And before, we couldn't do that. If people were doing evil, we didn't have the moral strength or spiritual strength to resist whatever temptation that came. But now, as the power comes in your life, spiritually stand fast. Everyone that has given himself, herself to the Lord, or will still give himself to the Lord, during this crusade of divine solution, the power to stand up, the power to stand upright and the power to stand fast will come to everyone in Jesus' name. I didn't hear a good divine solution. Amen. Amen. Physically, stand up. Morally, stand upright. Spiritually, stand fast. Doctrinally, stand firm. You know, there are people... You cannot tell what they believe. And they hold the Bible, they carry the Bible, but they cannot stand firm. They, they say, I'm a Christian, I'm born again, I'm a child of God. This week, look at what they believe. And the following week, they believe another thing. The Lord is coming to you today. And he says, I want to help you. He will help you. I said it will help you. And it says doctrinally, stand firm. You will stand firm. Unshakable. Are you hear your amen? amen? Immovable. You will stand firm in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, courageously. You know, people who don't have courage, they are afraid. They cannot stand for anything and they cannot stand for uprightness. But now the Lord is coming to you and is saying that courageously you stand alone. That's like Daniel. And Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the king's meat of the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the eunuch that he will not take that wine. And Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, when Nebuchadnezzar said, if I decide to cast you into the furnace of fire, where is the God that will, that will deliver you? Some people cannot stand alone. They do not have the courage, but when the gospel comes to you, with power, you will stand. I will stand. You are able to stand courageously standing alone. And so Nebuchadnezzar was angry. The anger of Nebuchadnezzar means nothing. Somebody help me shout nothing. Whatever they say, how furious they are. When you make up your mind and you say, Today I'm going to have this command that says, Stand, I will stand courageously, I will stand alone. Number one, physically, stand up. Number two, morally, stand upright. Number three, spiritually, stand fast. Number four, doctrinally, stand firm. Number five, courageously, stand alone. Number six, supportively, stand with. 
You see, as Christians, as we come to Christ, we have the nature of Christ, we have the life of Christ, and we want to help other people. And when other people suffer, now we can sympathize with them. Other people have a load to carry. We can carry that with them. Our life has now totally turned around. And supportively, we stand with we stand with other people. Number seven is distinctly, courageously, supportively, distinctly. Now we stand out. We stand out. We stand out of the crowd. As other people might be corrupt, and we talk about corruption in our country, in the office, in the market, in the educational system, everywhere, even in politics. And then a Christ comes to you. As Christ comes to you, you go back to that same office and the power of the Lord will hold you up and you will stand out distinctly in Jesus' name. I will stand out. I said I will stand out. In your behavior, in your character, in your lifestyle, and the grace of God, and the power of God, and the salvation of God comes to you today. You will stand out in Jesus' name. Now, purposefully, purposefully. You know, if you're going to stand in life, and you're going to stand as you go through life, there must be a determination. There must be a desire and there must be something you know, that you want to single out yourself and anybody that knows you will know that the wind cannot blow you here and there because you stand for, you stand for something. We have been told if you cannot stand for something, you know, you will fall for everything. Every day can hurry that, uh, that cars will impose upon you because you are not made of the person that has backbone, a person that has diligence, a person that says, I stand for this, and that's what I stand for. Any other thing that comes, any error, any falsehood that comes, I am not for that. I stand for something you will stand for Christ. Are you there? I said you'll stand for Christ. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. You soldiers of the cross, be valiant in your life. You go to the office, anywhere you go to, you understand, others are going to bench, others are going to cheat, others are going to cut corners, others are going to lie, others are going to do evil things, but you are going there understanding that the grace to stand has come in your life and purposefully you will stand for something good. The amen is too weak. That's not like an Abuja. Amen! Number one, socially, you are standing the right side up. Socially, as you move around anxiety, all the other people, they put their heads on the ground and they put their feet dangling in the air. And that's what we've been doing before too. They say everything wrong. They do everything wrong. They act everything wrong. They do everything every day. They are upside down. But now you say, I have the command and the command is given to me and it says stand upright and socially in the society you stand the right side up number 10 filially that is in the family husband and wife that is filially husband and wife parents and children you stand by each other stand by each other it is not that when the wife is having a little challenge then pack your load and then you go where we cannot see you you are running away from problem you are not going to run away from problems anymore because solution has come in your life solution has come in my life the husband will stand by the wife the wife was stand by the husband the parents will stand 
by the children and the children as the parents are getting older at they will stand by their parents filially in the family we have the command of the lord and the grace is coming to us and the power is coming to us and you stand by each other in jesus name now tonight tonight what will bring that solution what will bring uh, that strength what will bring the supernatural in your life i'm reading again i'm reading it says it said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and he lived and walked and he lived and walked and impotence vanished away power came in tonight helplessness will vanish away tonight all your weakness will vanish away and as you hear the word stand all of a sudden as you say yes lord i believe that word is coming to me the strength the salvation to make you stand you will have in jesus name physically tonight your weak bones will receive strength and your big uh, tummy that something is packed there as the command comes tonight all that thing that is packed there will vanish away in jesus name those blind eyes when you hear the word tonight being opened your blind eyes are open and that chief hand i cannot strike the hand you will tonight all cannot, cannot, cannot will vanish away from your life. I cannot stand, that will pass away. I cannot see, that will pass away. I cannot hear, that will pass away. I cannot bend, that will pass away. I cannot walk, I cannot run, that will pass away. It is coming to you tonight in Jesus' name. Now, look at this, look at this. Paul the Apostle, looking at him, stared with a loud voice. He didn't touch him. He didn't shake him. He didn't put oil on him. He didn't do anything. It's the word. Why? Because Paul the Apostle had been filled with Christ and the Spirit of Christ. Let me explain it to you this way, that when you become a Christian, you stretch out your hand like this, are you see me there? You stretch out your hand like this, and then you see Jesus coming in, and then he gets into you. His hand gets into your hand. His head gets into your head. And his trunk, his body gets into your body. And his leg gets into your legs. And now you are indwelt by Christ. When you are saved. And then anything you say now will be the word of power will be the word of authority, will be the word of solution. Because it's not you that speaks, it's Christ that speaks in you. And also as I'm standing here, it's not me talking to you, it's the Spirit of God within me that is telling you, stand upright on your feet and power will come, you'll stand upright in Jesus' name. Christ will speak to you the same power he had in creation. That power of creation will speak tonight and say, stand upright on your feet. And then all your weaknesses, infirmities, and sicknesses, and diseases, and impotence, everything will vanish away. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Salvation is coming. Forgiveness is coming. Redemption is coming. It will come to you. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's coming now. It's coming now. It's coming now. Salvation, forgiveness. The gospel has told us that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you want that salvation now, if you want that forgiveness now, if you want that freedom now, and you say, I don't want to be powerless anymore. I want to have the salvation of the Lord that will give me spiritual strength anywhere you are. Raise up your hand. God bless you. This one will not pass you by. I said this will not pass you by. 
anywhere you are to the left to the right in front of me far back anywhere you are you want that forgiveness now and you want all the impossibilities and all the weaknesses and all the infirmity everything to vanish away and for the strength of salvation the power of the gospel is salvation to come to you now Rise up now as I raise up your hand. Rise up wherever you are. God bless you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Rise up. Salvation has come. Forgiveness has come. Rise up now. Redemption has come. Rise up now. All your sins of the past, the Lord will forgive and then will give you a new life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. That newness is coming right now. Anyway, you are just raised up that time. You are a boy. Salvation is for you. You are a girl. Salvation is for you. And this is the time to look steadfastly. Not to allow anything to distract your attention. Salvation. Salvation. Talk to the Lord while you are raising up your hand. And while you are standing up. Make sure that you respond to this call of the Lord right now. Jesus is saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice in all this message you have been hearing, that's his voice. If anyone hears my voice and he opens the door, I will come into him. I will sup with him, fellowship with him. I will strengthen him. Raise up your hand and stand up anywhere you are online. This is your time for your salvation to come at home there where you are watching in a local church there where you are watching on the field there where you are watching in your hotel room there where you are watching anywhere you are now you are watching raise up that hand concentrate pay attention don't look here and there understand that now salvation has come and then open your mouth and tell the lord oh lord i thank you salvation is mine and what was impossible for me before to walk straight and to walk upright and to walk in the narrow path that leads to heaven, all that is going to be possible now. I surrender. I surrender my life unto Christ completely. Give yourself to him. And then with faith, you believe by grace. Are you saved through faith? That not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Don't wait for feeling. Don't wait for, you know, sweating or whatever. Understand, the moment you hold on to the Lord, He is my Savior, that salvation will come. Tell the Lord and tell Him, thank you. I know you've done it. It's done. I said it's done. Keep up that hand while you're standing up and praying for you. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you because of the call you've given to everyone. And this salvation, this forgiveness, this redemption is for everyone that calls upon the Lord. And I pray, Lord, according to your promise, which cannot fail, forgive everyone in Jesus' name. And I pray that the strength and the power and the backbone and the stamina that comes with salvation will come to everyone now in Jesus' name. And I pray that as salvation comes in now, and then they go back home, they go anywhere, the power to stand upright and the power to stand righteously and the power to stand out and the power to stand as a real distinct child of God grant to everyone in Jesus name thank you Lord because I know you have done it in Jesus name I pray it is done I said it is done Say, I am saved. The Lord confirmed that in your experience in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our counselors, please attend to those who have indicated that they are deciding for Jesus. If you have decided for Christ tonight, please 
collect a slip from our counselors around you there, fill in the details, and thereafter hand the slip back to them. Counselors, let's quickly give them slips. And please call the attention of the counselor. Please remain standing if you have given your life to Christ. Remain standing until you have collected a slip, filled, and returned same to the counselors. All counselors, let's uh, get out the needed details. Please, as you collect the form, you fill in the details, your name, your contact, phone, WhatsApp number, email, whatsoever will help us to be, of, to be able to contact you and be of more help to you. And all the brethren online, all the listeners, all the audience online, please click on the link that is being shown online and fill in the form and submit. Fill in the form online and submit. We want to be of more spiritual help to you. And the Lord will make it a blessed fellowship and relationship in Jesus' name. So let's have all the details so you can receive more from the Lord as we get in touch with you. More blessings. Let's have your full details, please. Write everything clearly, legibly. Make it readable to whoever we pick the slip. Online, if you are connected online, fill in the form that is available online. Just click the link that is, that is being shown on your screen now. Get connected and continue to enjoy the blessing of the Lord. Divine solution will continue to flow into your life. All of us who are seated, let's continue to pray. The Lord has great miracles for us all tonight. Our Father and the Lord, our pastor is coming back very shortly for divine solution ministration. And you will be a partaker. You will receive your miracle. You will receive your solution. Tonight is the night of solution. You are on a solution ground. And all who are online also remain connected. Until the last amen, even after the testimony, after the min divine solution ministration, we are going to have testimonies. And then we worship God together. We round up together. So stay connected and continue to pray now. And tell the Lord what you want him to do for you tonight. He has solution to every challenge, every problem, every mountain. The great God of heaven has divine solution. You will receive. You will receive. All of us who are here, let's remain seated and keep on praying. All our brethren in all other locations remain seated and keep on praying. And all who are connected online remain connected. Stay connected. And continue to pray. This counseling time is prayer time for every other person apart from the counselees. Let's all keep on praying. And the counselees, as you hand over your form, you also get seated and start to pray. Counselors, please, let's be very fast. And let the supervisors indicate when you finish with your sector. And the counselors should move to other sectors to assist if you are true with your own sector. Don't return to your seat until we are through with all the sectors. Counselors, once you are done with your sectors, please move to 
other sectors where we still have counselees. Let's all keep on praying. All who are seated, let's keep on praying. And those who are waiting to be attended to, commune with heaven as well. But ensure you get a sleep from the counselors nearest to you, fill in the details, and the sleep back to the counselors. Divine solution for all. You receive yours. Divine solution for all. Be expectant. Divine solution for all. That's what the Lord has promised to do. And he will do it. He will give it to you. You will receive, and it shall be permanent. Tonight, keep on praying, keep on expecting divine solution. The counselors that are returning, check up on your way. If there's any sector that is not yet done, join so we can finish together at the same time. Supervisors, indicate if you are done with your section. Prayer time, counseling time, prayer time. Counseling time, prayer time. Blessings on your way. Miracles on your way. Your solution is tonight. Spiritual problem. Physical problem. Social family, family problem. Business. Work. Employment. Solution. You have solution tonight. All challenges. Solution. Whatever the mountain. Solution. Miracle for you. Keep on praying. And keep on expecting. Counselors, let's round up quickly. Hand over the slips to the supervisors. And check up other sectors that may still be having counselees. Sector supervisors, check and uh, indicate if you are done. Let the coordinators please check up for us. The coordinating pastor for counseling. Let's hurry up. Let's finish quickly. Keep on praying, brethren. Let's keep on praying. If you're online, remain connected. And keep on praying, expecting your miracle tonight. Keep on praying, keep on expecting. In all locations where we are connected, let's keep on praying and let's keep on expecting. All the sectors that are not true yet, please let's hurry up and let 
those who are true join to help where they are still having and uh, the counselors where we still have counselees. If you have been attended to, please take your seat. If you are attended to, please take your seat. If you have not been attended to, please get in touch. Get the attention of the counselors around you. Counselors, remember to drop your slips with the supervisors. We are done that side, okay. Let's all rise up. It's time to receive divine solution. The man of God is coming up now. Get ready. Praise the Lord. Uh uh. Are you there? I said, praise the Lord. Your time has come. My time has come. That solution is coming to you now. Power. Healing. Deliverance. Miracle. Signs and wonders. Coming upon your life right now. Remember, remember. The apostle said with a loud voice. Stand upright on thy feet. No touch. No physical contact. He sent the word and it happened. And it's going to be your turn right now. Yeah. Blind eyes will open. Yeah. Incredible diseases will go. Yeah. The power of God will come upon your life now. Yeah. Raise up one hand and lay your hand in the place where you have any challenge. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. We know that you have not changed. Your power has not changed. Your promises have not changed. And we know that whatever we ask in the name of Jesus will be granted at this time. For everyone here, for everyone over there, and for everyone listening connected, your power is connected with them right now. And therefore, Lord, I pray that divine solution will come to everyone in Jesus' name. Blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. All the swellings in your body come out in Jesus' name. Deafness, dumbness come out in Jesus' name. Swelling hunchback and swelling elephantiasis, swelling goiter, come out in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, any incurable disease like cancer, like ulcer, like tuberculosis, whatever, internal problem, I command, be healed in Jesus' name. Those who have stroke, or polio, or paralysis, lameness, I command, Stand upright in Jesus' name. Skin disease, vanish away. Leprosy, vanish away. COVID-19, vanish away in Jesus' name. HIV, AIDS, be healed in Jesus' name. Every request of your people, answer them right now. Everywhere, left, center, right, anywhere, all countries, nations, continents, I pray, signs and wonders, every now in Jesus' name. And I pray miracles everywhere. The supernatural manifested everywhere. And Lord, testimonies in every mouth. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Divine solution is there already. Deliverance is there already. 
supernatural healing there already there's nothing else you are waiting for do whatever you couldn't do before your miracle is ready what you're there Shout amen. You believe in shout amen. amen. It is done. It's, the man of God says the miracle is already where? With you there. So check it up. Check it up and come out and testify. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. We need to worship God together before we go. We need to thank God together for the miracles. And we want to hear your testimony. Don't go yet. Stay connected if you're online. In all the locations, just remain where you are. Here also, check yourself and shout hallelujah as you see the miracle. Let all who couldn't see before begin to see now. Open your eyes and see. You couldn't 